This year, Summerscape chose Dvorak Dimitri because it wanted to somehow highlight the fact that in the 19th century, particularly in Chopin's lifetime, the opera was the dominant and most um, popular, if you will, and influential art form. It's a folktale opera. Uh, but it turns out that uh, Dvorak wrote a great historical opera. Precisely the kind of opera that uh, the uh, generation of Chopin's elders expected him to write. Um, and it was not only about a uh, historical matter, but it, ironically nothing about Czech politics. It wasn't about Czech history. It was exactly about Polish-Russian history. It was the famous episode of the false Dmitri after the death of Boris Kudinov. This is clearly the second best-known opera outside of Rusalka that he wrote, really one of the great composers of the 19th century. And um, <clears throat> let's take a look at Dimitri. And so happens that a Czech scholar uh, spent his life figuring out what really Dvořák's intentions were given the various versions and put together a critical edition of um, of what was essentially Dvořák's um, best, best judgment. It's grand opera, it's, you know, it's a big chorus, um, it's a very, um, very theatrical in the way it is, the um, um, way it unfolds. And uh, in our production, the director, Anne Bogart, has uh, rightly um, decided that to set it in the 17th century would be to put it up against the Mussorgsky Boris Gudinov, which really doesn't bear comparison. It's a completely different musical style and idiom. It's a different aesthetic. So instead of having it look like we just borrowed a lot of costumes and sets from Boris Gudinov, you know, versions of the Kremlin and you know, 17th century Russian outfits and crowns and so, there's a little bit of that in the production. Um, the decision was to set it in the, in what might be considered a modern equivalent of the time of troubles in Russia of the 17th century, and that is the years around the fall of communism. The early 90s, late 80s, with the disintegration of the Soviet Union, and the chaos that uh, accompanied the years of the Yeltsin regime in the 90s. The wholesale thievery, the rise of oligarchs, the breakdown of law and order, which actually led to the popular accession of a kind of czar-like figure of Vladimir Putin. And what the opera very, very properly puts forward, which makes it very germane today, is a political fickleness and influence of the crowd, of, of the people, you know, uh, and the ethnic conflict between Poles and Russians the religious conflict between Roman Catholics and Russian Orthodox. These are totally relevant today and to our vision of Europe today and of the United States. And somehow this lingering desire for the strong man to take charge and uh, this kind of um, um, politics and the sort of a way in which conspiracies and then um, lies about history and uh, lies about the present and manipulation of the crowd and uh, to the benefit of kind of a autocracy is the hidden subtext of, of this opera. Uh, so the opera has a kind of political relevance and um, one has the impression that one seeing the 17th century uh, through the lens of the late 20th century, or in reverse, one seeing um, the 17th century through the lens of the 21st century. So it is, um, you know, if uh, people were critical of the um, Central Park production of, 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 of um, Julius Caesar as being, you know, blatantly political in terms of its connection to the criticism of President Trump, this is not about 
President Trump. This is not about American politics. But ironically, it's about Russian politics and Russian history and uh, uh, issues that are central to the resolution of problems in Russia. And uh, it's not irrelevant to understanding why Putin is who he is and why he's in the position he is in and why he runs the kind of government he does. And uh, one can argue certain continuities in Russian history um, from the 17th century, which is before the Romanovs, uh, through to today. So um, it has a, a much more subtle uh, but pressing connection uh, to the events of today. And we didn't program this ever anticipating that um, Russia and Russian politics and the way of doing politics in Russia would be relevant when the uh, first curtain rose on the first performance.